So yeah, this this talk is actually about monster mail, um, and it kind of it grew out of a talk that I had been giving on elliptic curves. Um, so the last couple of years, or a year or so, I've been kind of trying to go on a quest to understand all the aspects of Bitcoin, from like mining to um, the photography side and lightning, and and there's just there are endless rabbit holes everywhere. So I have a very like. I wouldn't say cursory knowledge, but it's like a, a very thin <laughs> layer of knowledge about many different topics in Bitcoin. Um, but uh, so Nostrum Mill kind of grew out of out of that work, uh, um, kind of as a side, just fun project. So let me just start here. So why have you done this? Um, so Nostrum is like a, I kind of. If you, in one way, you could think of it as like a social network for public keys, specifically for Bitcoin public keys. Um, and because of that, it solves a whole lot of problems that have just been notoriously difficult when it comes to PGP in bringing PGP mainstream. Um, so like PGP and email has technically been around for a long time, but um, if it, <laughs> is it really a feature if nobody uses it? You know, <laughs> it's like, like <laughs> I don't know. Um, maybe it's a philosophical point. And um, but one thing that email did prove was that, um, like, I, I grew up in like the AOL days, so you know, everybody's mother and grandmother knows how to use email, which like is like some. It seems silly now, but like back then, like people really didn't understand what an at symbol was and like how to how to. So that took a whole lot of training. And then um, when social networks came along, that was sort of like an era of like, you know, at first like I, I was on like I, I went to I was in school in Boston at the time, so we were like one of the few schools that were were on Facebook. And then like it felt like within like overnight, suddenly your mom's on Facebook, and now you don't want to use it as much anymore because of that and, and so forth. But um, but yeah, so but the thing that that Facebook did was that it like kind of it. it it taught people how to uh, start communicating online in a more social way, um, and then what Nostra is doing is like just piggybacking on that, and like just kind of it's like giving you medicine with like a spoonful of sugar. Uh, so now that we have like these keys, it's like what can you do with them? Um, obviously, you can send Bitcoin transactions with them. I don't recommend doing that with your Nostra keys yet, um, but. Uh, but sort of like you can, it starts to bridge, like blend the idea of, like, you know, Bitcoin started out as like you're only doing transactions, and now using that same curve, you're doing other things like social interactions. And so, is it a, is it is a Noster client? Is it really just a really bad Bitcoin wallet, or is a Bitcoin wallet just a really terrible social experience? Like I don't know. Um, but there are other things that uh, Noster just doesn't do that email does really well. Like long form content, um, so Nostra is kind of like intended for short messages that are transient and are like not meant to be kept forever. Although apparently most relays keep them around forever, but they will eventually run out of memory. Um, and uh, archival storage that's another thing where, um, uh, yeah. So email is really good at like I still have spam going back. Decades, uh, and, or you know, ten years or so, just it just sits there, and I don't pay for it, the storage for it, but somehow it just works. Um, and um, being ubiquitous, so, so again, like everybody's got email. In fact, email is like the fallback for every company's line of communication with their customers. Like when you sign up for anything, you put in your email address, and it's just if you lose your password, they they check your email and. and um, uh, so there is two-factor authentication, but that the other factor is email, and so uh, it's we'll get to that later. Like things that this might lead to. Um, so yeah, but first, yeah, I mentioned since this is on the door, it's an elliptic curves talk. Um, this is <laughs> this is just like an iframe with the um, the talk I usually give is about um, like finite elliptic curves and how they how they can be used to do things like encrypting. Um, and, and shared secrets. So there's a, um, uh, so I, I put together this little thing. So let me go to the secret sharing tab. 
you can see better what's going on here. Um, all right, so secret sharing. Um, so, yeah, so Bitcoin elliptic curve is really just like a set of points in this 2D plane. Um, this, this particular curve I'm showing here is the, uh, the expression, oh wait, why is that not the LaTeX, the LaTeX is showing up here, but, um, but it's, a, it, it's like a mathematical expression whose solutions are points on this, on this curve. This is a much smaller space than Bitcoin actually uses, so this is just a space of size like 33, I think, on the side. Um, so, yeah, oh yeah, here is the curve. This is Bitcoin's curve, uh, y squared equals x cubed plus 7. And every one of these points satisfies um, a solution to that, um, to that equation. So what's happening with, um, when you create a public key, what's really happening is you're, you're doing a bit of math on this curve. So you're starting from a point, which is called generator point, and you're, and you, you're stepping around this pattern uh, in, a, in a deterministic way such that um, for every point, or for every uh, integer you, you multiply this point by, it's sort of like the number of steps around that curve, you will, um, I got a nifty little clock here. Why is it not revealing when I click the details? I do not know. Um, so your private key is basically just an integer that tells you how many steps around the curve you're going. And, you're, and it, it basically it's a random kind of hop along this, this path. So, What's happening when you when you do um, when you do a public key? So a private key is just an integer, and a public key is a point that is some other point on that curve. So what you can do is um, you choose a, uh, a generator point, for example. So this is like Alice on the left hand side, and this is her private key. It's the number five, and her public key is this is uh, this point down here, twenty three and one. And Bob can do the same thing. So he picks a number like seven. It's my favorite number. Um, don't use seven as your private key, by the way. Uh, and he picks a, the same generator point as Alice. And now he gets a public key. It's uh, six and six thirty-six. It's these coordinates here. Um, and since they're both using the same, they're starting at the same place. There's some interesting math that arises from that. Uh, so particularly, um, the order that they do their, their hopping around the curve does not matter. So what that means is that um, if she takes, if Alice takes her private key and she multiplies it, let's see, she multiplies it by Bob's public key, that's what this HB means here, she'll get the same thing as if Bob takes his private key and multiplies by her public key. Because when you expand these out, you'll get this expression. So the generator point, and then times the number of pops along for Bob, and times the number of pops for Alice. So pretty sweet. So all she has to do is um, look up his public key. How she gets his public key is the whole is kind of why Noster is important. Because before this, he would have to like I don't know tell her in person. Um, so his public key is six thirty six. Which I think is up here. Yeah, there it is. Um, and so she takes her private key, multiplies it by his pub key, and she gets this position 2420. Um, then he does the same thing, right? So he, he looks up her pub key, which is 231, uh, which is, I think, down here. Multiplies it by his private key. And he gets the same thing as she does, completely independent. Um, so now what can they do? So they can start. Um, they can use that that uh, that point as their shared, their quote unquote shared secret. So it's shared in the sense that like they can both compute it in independently, but it's secret in the sense that only they could have. Um, only their only knowledge of their private keys could have led one to compute that shared secret. 
Um, so you can think of that as like a password that only they know, but they both came up with independently. And that's very powerful because now if um, Alex wants to send a message to Bob, she can say like, all right, Bob, this is super secret message. She can encrypt it with my mouse. Um, she can encrypt it and she can send it to him and then he's like, oh, I got mail. And it's just a um, bunch of gobbledygook, but he can decrypt it and read her message. And he can do the same thing. He encrypts, sends, decrypts. Cool. So she she can reproduce the message, and they can also do cool things like layering. So they can just encrypt this multiple times, and each time add some more data, and only Alice can decrypt it as long as they're using that key. So um, this uh, this app is a uh, um, or this this application is using a form of encryption called symmetric encryption, where the same essentially the same password or key can be used to both encrypt and decrypt. Um, and that's this is how Noxter DMs work. So go ahead. Would the math work the same if you had three people? Can you apply by both of their public keys? Uh, yes, but um, but that's where um, yeah, I'm going to get to that later, because that's going to come up when we talk about carbon copying and multi-party stuff. Because uh, I couldn't figure out how to do that until I talk, was talking to Taj Dryer this week, and he's like, oh, just do this. But anyway, um, so yeah, this is a great conference for like just hammering out stuff like that. Um, okay, so now that we've... I think I can't just do it. Okay. All right, so... Now on to Nostra Mail. So, how, um, so there's some assembly required. Uh, you're going to need Docker if you want to run this application. And you'll want to put in your, um, in a .env file. So this is like a local file that's going to, that, that is going to be in the, the Git repo that you're, not in the Git repo, sorry. <laughs> it's ignored by the Git repo. Never commit your, your .env to the Git repo. Uh, this is just an example. Um, that you're, you need to fill out when uh, when you run uh, like your setup. So the only thing you need is uh, an Oscar private key, which the app will will can, can generate these on the fly. That's not hard. Um, you need an email address, and again, everybody has one, so that shouldn't be too hard. But you need an email password. If you're using Gmail and two factor with Gmail, there's a there's a nifty thing that they allow where. Um, uh, if you want the uh, application to be able to access your email, you have to set up a separate password just for that app. It, and um, but it's not hard. There's a link to it on on my docs. And then you'll need to set up the uh, configure your your email provider to allow um, IMAP um, requests. So IMAP and and is a, is the protocol for pulling emails down from the server. So we both need to be able to send things to your email server, but also look for messages on the, the email server. Cool. So, yeah, so as I said, so you clone the Git repo, and then you do Docker Compose up once you've configured your settings, and you should be good to go. So what, what it looks like is, is this. So it runs in the browser, um, just at localhost, uh, 8050. And um, I'm trying to set it so that even if you don't have your environment variable set up, you can just fill those out here, and then your browser will can will just say, like, you want to remember all this stuff for you. Um, so that's probably the easiest way to do that. And then you have, like, a profile tab. And the only, the only thing that's required in terms of a Noster side is that you put your email address in your Noster profile. So here's my email address down here, um, and you can fill out this other stuff. So this field, though, the email field, doesn't exist in any current Noster coin. So um, which you might think that's weird, but it's like, um, it's, you can put whatever you want in your Noster profile. Yeah, cool. Um, 
You can put whatever you want in your ASCII profile, just put your email there. I think it's the most obvious place to put it, but of course, you know, if you want to make us, I'm working on a NIP for, for this, and we can make a special NIP that says I'm using Nostra Mail instead. But I wanted to try to do, try it with the most obvious thing first before like trying to impose standards on the community. Um, I've had bad experiences with that. <laughs> so, uh, not in this community, of course, but anyway. Um, <laughs> so then you have this uh, contacts page. So one of the environment variables you set is like a path to your a local like address book. Um, so you, you might have some private um, pub keys that you want to you you want to um, follow, but you don't want everyone else to follow. So there is I think Niblo two is the contacts nip, and that's a great way to like find out who's following who, and then. Um, like uh, traverse that graph to find their uh, email and profile and stuff. But uh, this is a way you can do it privately. So, for example, um, here's Alice. Uh, that's her profile. And here's Bob. Uh, and <laughs> and uh, so now, we'll, we'll, so, so what, it, there's, what also comes with the Docker container is um, you can do Docker Compose of Alice and it'll just show you Alice's view. Um, and the same with Bob. So here's her profile, as you said. Um, and she has the same set of contacts as Alice, as, as Bob. So here's Bob. And then um, when, and then here's their inbox. So this is updating. So what this inbox is doing is it's fetching it first, it's, it's looking on, um, it's fetching all the DMs from, from Alice to Bob and from Bob to Alice. So on the left side, this is like a text from Alice. On the right, that's text from Bob. So this was, um, these are just vanilla DMs. But this, this one down here is interesting. There's a little details here. And what it says is, oh, I don't know if you can read that. Yeah, it says, hey, Hey Alice, email incoming. So um, then what's down here is says, I sent you a DM matching this email subject. So what, what's happening is Bob sent an email, the subject in the email is um, is also duplicated on over a DM that he also sends to her. So when she sees the DM, um, what she's what she's actually seeing, this is this is the communication that's actually happening, is all all of this is encrypted. So this is, I think, I think this is refetching, I'm not sure. But anyway, all of, all of these are, are not uh, clear text messages, they're actually encrypted and sent and then decrypted. So what she's expanding out is, this is actually the body of the email that he sent. And then she's like, hey Bob, I got your email, and then she responds with this beautiful poem that um, her friend ChatGPT wrote about email. Uh, so, <laughs> so uh, so, um, yeah, and then here's a long form text doc. You can do other things like HTML, which you can't do with, um, with, uh, with Noster, uh, text alone. So, um, it's, I need to do some sanity, uh, not sanity, but sanitizing as a Freudian slip. Um, sanitizing the HTML before displaying it. So that uh, so that's all secure and good. Um, and then, so what does this look like? As far as the email side is concerned, um, this is the interface. So it's coming from uh, Bob's email address. This is a kind of a nifty trick for Gmail accounts. If you have one, you can just do plus and then whatever you want as the name. And then her contact is his, he's going to send it to Alex. This is Alex's email address, and the subject is required. So. Um, So this is the encrypted version, and this is what it looks like when it's decrypted. This is just to, to verify. Um, <coughs> so here's, here's the body. Um, this is the encrypted form and decrypted form. So now I need a sentence. And then hopefully, yep, we have a good email connection. So email <coughs> went out to Alice. And now on Alice's side, she checks her inbox. Um, she may need to refresh. 
Yeah, that's going back and forth. I'm, I'm still like fixing some caching stuff. Oh yeah, so <laughs> I'm also not doing any, any optimization when it comes to reconnecting to the relays and stuff, so I'll just try again. Um, and then that should work. Yeah. All right, so ETC++ is the best. Can you read it? So she got the, she got the message. Um, so obviously this is like, you know, people are used to sending emails. That part kind of makes sense. Um, but sending the reply, like it would be nice if you could just click here and it would, you know, you could just type in there and then maybe an icon for like email or attachments. So attachments work the same way. It's just uh, you encrypt the attachment to the, to the, um, using the same shared secret. Um, all right. So what's the tech stack? Sorry? What's your tech stack? What's your tech? What's your stack? Yeah, what's your stack? Oh. Oh yeah, uh, I'm using um, Flask and Plotly Dash and um, plus a, a, this tool I made called Side Dash, which makes it much easier to make <coughs> dashboards. So um, yeah, so that's my that's how I'm doing all this. Um, but this is really not meant to be like. There's some caveats here I kind of wanted to talk about at the end. Um, number one is that like Nipple Four is kind of broken. Um, this is something that Tash pointed out to me like yesterday, <laughs> and uh, so this was his comment on the NIP um, that kind of launched this whole discussion about how encryption should be done over Noster, and essentially it has to do with like this AES two fifty six uh, CBC algorithm, and there's some issue with that that means you can in, you can like insert stuff into it. Um, there's some workarounds for this, so. Nostra DMs are signed, so the receiver can tell if it was altered, but they just, so I guess you can, you can kind of like deny a service by just breaking people's messages um, so they can't um, easily tell. But the other thing is um, uh, that my Nostra email client doesn't sign the messages. So I assumed, I had assumed that if you can decrypt it, then you know where it came from, but apparently that's not necessarily true. So. I need to fix that. Um, and there's certain things like uh, carbon copying, like you want to be able to send one message to everybody and have them all be able to decrypt it. And so I was trying to come up with a way to do hierarchical um, shared secrets without reading any literature, of course, because I don't know how to read. So, uh, but then like I was talking to Taj about this, and he's like, "Yeah, all you have to do is like take the same, take have one decryption password." But then encrypt it to everyone who's receiving it, and they all get the same blob of like uh, the encrypted blob. But they also get like basically a, a JSON dictionary of like here's your pub key, here's your decryption key, and it's encrypted the message. So it's super simple. Um, he was just like it doesn't scale to millions of people because that linearly scales with the number of receivers. But in email, you're, you should only be carbon copying like ten people at most. I know you want, might want to do more. Still do that, um, but anyway, uh, uh, unless you're spamming, right? Like, um, and, and um, blind carbon copying is kind of similar. You just encrypt the email to each person individually, send it out individually, and that should probably be fine for most people's use cases. Um, other stuff like um, two-factor authentication, like it'd be cool if um, you could combine, like, uh, if if we had a way of easily doing that with Nostra And I think with the HTML, like templates and stuff, that's probably pretty straightforward. So like if you're a company that wants to use, uh, at, like get to Nostra users, or like use Nostra as a way to authenticate, you could probably use an approach like this. I'm, I just need to, we just need to kind of sit down and think through. Um, key rotation is another issue. So like if you lose a Nostra private key, like there's no fallback right now, but since everybody has email, this could be the way that you you tell people what your new private key is, and there might be some clever ways of like automating that, um, and also also <laughs> implementing this in other platforms besides Docker. Um, like, I mean, this is great because like you could at least put it on like Start Nine or Umbral or whatever. Um, but it'd be nice if you could just run this on your phone. So those are some food for thought. Um, I think that's the end. Yeah, that's the last slide. So let's. Uh, so, if if uh, if you integrate this with Gmail, it would stop Google from stealing your email. It's not right. Yeah. All Google would, awesome. all Google can see is um, 
encrypted. Is the encrypted version. I would open my email account to show you, but probably not. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so they can't they can't tell what you're saying. They only know where who came from and to. Right. But maybe you could also maybe do like a tour style routing thing where it's like I'm just going to forward to people who paid me some SAS wherever you want the email to go, and then all like they were just that's all Google would see is that a bunch of stuff is going back and forth. You might have to like pad your emails with some random data so they can't tell which message is which and then randomize when you send it um, and stuff like that. But there's yeah. Yeah. yeah, and and in terms of that, like most people they'll run Outlook or something if they're like a Windows user and they'll they'll already they already know how to tell Gmail to use Outlook instead. Um, and there's also like Popmail is another, instead of IMAP, or where it's like when you download an email, it deletes it from the server. So that may be another reason for approach to that. And then, but then you're back to the archival issue. Like, you kind of want to be able to store these files and things long term. But it's encrypted, I mean, they're basically just based. Yeah, yeah, they're just a, <laughs> they're just a data store yeah. at that point. Yeah. Any other questions or suggestions? Okay.